Let's fantasize right quick. You are a first generation cash flow millionaire. That's right, you. Now, everybody in our community, all the leaders get together and say, hey, listen, all the millionaires, we get together. All the people making money, we get together. We say, okay, we gotta improve our schools, we gotta build our roads, we gotta build our hospitals, we gotta create parks, and everybody's gotta chip in to do all this. So if you have the choice on how they're gonna be using your money, how efficient they're gonna complete the projects, and how you make sure they're cost effective to make sure they have a surplus for the next projects coming up, or would you rather just say, hey, this government, let me just cut you a check. I trust the way you guys are gonna do it. I trust your, your contacts. I trust your contractors. I trust your financial controllers. And if you ran out of money before you completed the projects, next year just hit me up with a bigger bill, so therefore we can get it done. What do you say? Before I answer that question, I wanna know what you're thinking. So in the comment section below, drop your answer, either millionaire myself or millionaire government. Would you rather have a millionaire myself getting involved or would you like to have a millionaire and the government increasingly get involved? What's your answer? Drop it in the comment section below and I'll give you this answer after we begin this episode of the Seven Figure Squad and how to think like a millionaire happening in three, two, one, let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Mighty smart guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, home of the Seven Figure Squad Studio here, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. So before I answer this question about millionaire myself or millionaire government, let me share with you this story about the boy who harnessed the wind. It's about a kid living in West Africa who was living in a starving, hungry community. Now, he was kicked out of school because his parents could not afford to pay the tuition. Now, he finds a way to get to the library. He goes into the library and self-learns and self-teaches himself engineering. He then constructs a prototype to create a windmill that would then feed a machine that would feed water to the crops. Now, just like any first generation big thinker, his parents heavily disagreed with him. And what did they do? They tore down that machine. But after more and more people were leaving the community because they had to find some place to feed their family, sadly, dad said, you know what? I don't want to lose this person. I don't want to lose this person. I don't want to lose this person. They're some of the brightest, smartest people in our community. I don't want to lose them. He agrees, okay, son, build up this windmill. Let's power this machine back up and let's give this a shot. And once this kid builds this windmill, it powers the machine to harness the wind, to create the water, to feed the crops. And everybody started eating and guess what? Everybody then was happy and more people wanted to stay and more people wanted to come to this community. So the bottom line, he saved the community. He saved his village. He saved his family. So some of you guys are watching this episode saying, Matt, what the heck does this story have to do with me being a first generation cash flow millionaire? Well, before I give you that answer, let me answer the original question we started off this video with. And here's the answer. Of course, we would rather have a deeper say so in how our government spends our money in terms of tax dollars. Because here's what I know. Our government overspends. How do I know this? Well, first of all, serving the United States Marine Corps, I remember going to uh, different deployments. I was in charge of Marines. And let's say, for example, we needed to buy a hammer. For the same hammer, we can go to Home Depot and buy it for 10 bucks. We got to go through our contractors. We got to go through our suppliers, through the supply network. And that same hammer that's $10 down the street at Home Depot, government contractors and government suppliers were charging the government $50, $100 for the same daggone hammer, probably less quality. It was less quality than what I can get at Home Depot. And so everyone in this channel, in this chain of events, was taking advantage of the government. And who was saying, who, who, is, who is the cop? Who is the police? Say, hey, uh, BS here, this hammer, it's 50 bucks, but at Home Depot, it's $10. What's up? Why am, I why am I spending another $40 that I don't have to? So ask yourself, what's easier to spend? The hard earned money that you worked hard for? Or is it easier to spend somebody else's money? Especially if you think it's an unlimited amount of money too as well. And here's another thing. When I wasn't making money yet, when I wasn't making a, a million dollars a year yet, guess what I didn't care about? I didn't care about how the government paid taxes. You know why? Because my payment of taxes is, is small and smaller and I was hoping to get a tax refund. But here's another, way, here's another way how millionaires think about taxes. Millionaires actually want to pay taxes. Do you know why? Here's why. 
It's a reflection that you are making money. You don't find millionaires at H&R Block. You don't find millionaires at uh, uh, Jackson Hewitt. You don't find millionaires at Liberty Tax Services. You find millionaires with a CPA. You find millionaires with a, with a uh, tax attorney, uh, with somebody that has a master's of science in taxation. By the way, what do I know about this type of stuff? I, went to, I, I didn't go to college. I went to a public high school. The reason why I got to know about these type of things, because not only did I start to make a lot of money, but I didn't want to depart with this money if I knew the government was unnecessarily spending my money. Here's, a, here's a, another reason why. Every time I go down the road, driving my car, and there's a pothole in the road because after the winter, there's big potholes that uh, you can literally uh, 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 sink in and it dr damages my wheels and tires. And I'm thinking to myself, doesn't, doesn't taxes pay for this type of stuff? Aren't taxes supposed to pay for the roads? Aren't taxes supposed to pay for quality health care? Aren't taxes supposed to pay for uh, uh, efficiencies? It's supposed to, but is it the actual execution of it? No. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I can operate this entity, this department better if actually we had a say so in how this was done. But we don't, do we? No, it's called good enough for government work. And just to let you know how a lot of millionaires like to think, here's how millionaires like to think. Government, Please stay out of my way. Please stay out of my way. Listen, when a bully shows up, get involved. But until then, please get out of my way. Let me do right by people. Let me serve the people. Let me solve problems. Let me create jobs. But until then, could you please get out of my way? Could you please shrink your involvement in my life, please? And in exchange, you tax me less. See, that's the way a lot of first generation cash flow millionaires think. Meanwhile, a lot of ways that first generation cash flow millionaires think is this. Number one, we know the benefit of taxes because the public good that it does. And number two, it's also a reflection that if we're paying a lot of taxes, that means it's a reflection that we're also making a lot of money. But number three, we're just not happy of how the government, whether Uncle Sam or cousin Illinois or cousin California has been a steward over the money they've collected in the public coffers to take care of our public services. And that represents our hard work and effort. Now, back to the story about this kid who harnessed the wind. This kid took it upon himself to learn these things. He took it upon himself to learn engineering. He took it upon himself to learn machinery and how to take advantage of what's already there, which is nature, to help and serve his community and help his village. And the bottom line, when he was empowered to create change, he did. He wasn't waiting for a handout. He wasn't waiting for a bailout. He said, listen, if I'm gonna be in this situation, let me be active in my own rescue. The point of all this is to help you start thinking like a millionaire. And we take things into your own hands, you take initiative, guess what? You end up helping yourself, and there's pride in that. That's why you're gonna find a lot of millionaires taking advantage of their tax savings to do what? Instead of spending it, guess what they're doing? They're creating jobs with it. They're reinvesting back into the business with it. They're expanding their enterprise to do more of that. And once a part to do so, you as a first generation cash flow millionaire can effectively help create change faster and better than any other government can with the same amount of money. Now, before I let you go, let me leave you with three things to be thinking about. Number one, waiting never wins. Procrastinators never win. You know, there's a funny joke that says, hey, we're gonna create a Facebook group called Procrastinators of America. When should we start the group? Everybody in the group said, let's start it tomorrow. <laughs> That's the point. Procrastination and waiting never wins. If you're waiting for somebody else to do it for you, guess what? You're gonna be let down over and over and over. And you can say, you know what? When is somebody to help me? When is gonna somebody help me? And you're gonna be more mad, more upset because nobody is. And I've said this before, no matter what president is sitting in the White House, no matter what president, red, blue, Democrat, Republican, no matter who's in the White House, the most important decisions are what happens in your house. Because think about this. Imagine if that kid who harnessed the power of the wind waited for the government to come in and help to feed the crops, to feed the starving village. What would have happened to everybody in the village? He didn't wait. And in so doing, he saved his village. The second point, if you don't have to, don't surrender control of your money. What am I thinking about? Here's how millionaires react to taxes. Hey, what's the loophole? Hey, what's my tax deductions? How do I legally and ethically get through not paying this if I invest in that? See, that's how millionaires think. And by the way, a further breakdown of that will be coming on this Wednesday's episode of how to strategize like a millionaire. And point number three, there's only two types of tax laws. Number one, for the informed. And number two, for the uninformed. So you gotta ask yourself in this question, which would you rather be? 
informed or uninformed. As I mentioned earlier, this coming Wednesday, I'll be launching another episode on how cash flow millionaires use taxes as a strategy to become an asset versus a liability. Wouldn't you like to know how? Because once you know how to do this, the government loves to give them tax breaks and tax favored deductions for those that know how to use these laws legally and ethically. So this Wednesday, I'm gonna be sharing with you this episode. Make sure you subscribe and you stay tuned. Now, in order to prepare for this Wednesday's episode on how to use taxes as an asset versus a liability, I'm gonna give you a little bit of the homework. I want you to go on Amazon. I want you to find this book called The Trump Tax Cuts, okay? Find this book. Purchase it, buy it. There's a lot of stuff in there that you'll get a lot of value from. For example, I was having a, uh, I was having a, not argument, a debate with my father-in-law about the Trump tax cuts. And he says, give me one benefit. Give me one benefit. Give me one benefit in the Trump tax cuts. I said, Dad, um, you're in it. You're living in it. You know, said, new house we purchased last year because we paid, we made more money uh, last year than the year before, but we paid less taxes thanks to the Trump tax cuts. How do we do it? It's going to be in this book. The second book I want you to watch is How to Save Your Taxes Big Time. I get this every year. It's written by Sandy Botkin, an attorney. He used to work for the IRS. He trains attorneys. He's a wealth of knowledge to teach you how to reduce your taxes big time. So instead of paying the government the money, it goes back into your pocket. You grow it, you manifest it, and give you better chances to become a first generation cash flow millionaire. Meanwhile, if you want to continue to play financial office, watch this video here about my reaction to Trump's delaying of the stimulus package until after the election. And also the second video here too I want you to watch is because of this humongous wealth gap that's happening between all uh, multicultural wealth gaps in our, in our country, white, black, brown, Latino, Asian, right here, about how insurance can close this wealth gap in America with my friend Billy Williams. So with that being said, guys, I love knowing your thoughts. Drop in the comment section below. I appreciate you tuning into this channel. Um, you guys have been interacting with you heavily on this channel. You guys have been getting a lot of uh, uh, engagement and, and content from this. I hope to keep this up. We're close to, at the recording of this video, we're close to 20,000 subscribers. Our goal is to get to 25,000 subscribers. And I told you, when we get to 25,000 subscribers, I'm gonna give out three books personally signed by Patrick but David, a Wall Street Journal's best-selling book called Your Next Five Moves, his autograph from my office to your desk. Once we get to 25,000 subscribers, the first three people to do that, once we get there, we'll pick them when we get to 25,000 subs. With that being said, guys, appreciate you tuning in. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe, hit notifications the next time we upload our next episode. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.